Hey there, it's Stephen Gates here from MyPLCTraining.com and I've got another video for you today uh, to help you become a competent PLC programmer and today's video is all about ladder logic. So if you want to learn PLCs, you got to learn ladder logic. So here I have a program, a basic program open with some ladder logic instructions and we're going to walk through it and um, we'll just explain what's going on on these five rungs. Very simple program, but if you're new to ladder logic, then this might actually seem kind of intimidating. Um, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through each rung and we'll show you how all this works. Uh, so first, I uh, just want to make a few comments about the project I have set up here. Notice this is Studio 5000 Logics Designer. And the project is set up for a emulate controller, which is instead of using a PLC, we have this software here. I'll drag it over, which is Logics Emulate. You can see it. it's supposed to look like a PLC rack, and we've got a controller there. Um, so then next we have a IB16 in uh, the project, which is a discrete input module for 24 volts DC. And then we have an OB16E output module in slot 2, which is a discrete 24 volt DC output module. Uh, okay, so next let's jump right into the ladder logic. So starting with rung 0, here we have a simple rung uh, with a few XICs. Um, these are XICs. And these function like normally open contacts, if you're familiar with um, electrical relays, electromechanical relays that have normally open contacts. And we've got one XIO here, which function, functions like a normally open contact. And then we have one OTE, which functions like a relay coil. So notice how the start PB uh, PB stands for push button, um, has an address underneath the actual tag name. So start PB is the tag name, and then we have this address under here. And this is called an alias, and basically it addresses one of the points from this input module. So that um, whenever that point turns on, that input turns on, we turn on tag start PB. So uh, just real quick, the syntax for this, it says local, so that means the local rack, which would be the same rack that the controller is in. And then we have 1, which would be slot 1, that's this guy. And then we have i for input dot data dot 0. So this would be the 0th input, if you will, the very first input um, available on that module. Next, we have the stop PB tag in a XIC, which is address to slot 1, channel 1, or input 1. By the way, these addresses are set up, again, using tag aliasing, um, which basically means you give the address an alias or tag name which is more descriptive and convenient to work with. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about aliasing, uh, check out our free training on tag aliasing. Uh, it's linked below. You can check that out. And then all the way on the right, we have this OTE instruction. So this is for motor start relay tag, and it is addressed to slot 2. Uh, output 0, so slot 2 is here and then since it's an output module uh, we've got an O for output and then dot data dot zero for the zeroth output. Now let's come back here to the left side again. This is what is called a seal in or latching ladder circuit. So this part of the logic won't engage until we first engage the output with the upper part of the circuit. So um, this part of the circuit becomes true. It turns on the motor start relay, which I'll just toggle these um, just to show you what that would look like. It would toggle that, and then you can see that automatically turns on the motor start relay. So then, even when we turn this off, 
Let's start P B B B. Excuse me. We have a path all the way to the motor start relay. Now this next item here will be in charge of stopping the motor or interrupting the circuit. And this is an XIO, which again functions like a normally closed contact. And when this tag, the motor running stop timer dot done becomes true, this instruction will open like a normally closed contact would and it will interrupt the circuit or break the seal such that to start the motor again you'd have to press the start button again so if we just toggle that that would turn this off now one last thing about this rung that I want to talk about here is the stop push button so here's two questions to consider about the stop push button um, first is why is the stop push button up here rather than here like the motor running stop timer dot done and then second why is it an XIC instead of an XIO like this one so for the first question why is it in the middle of the rung rather than just the seal in or latch in area well having the stop push button here allows it to not only interrupt the seal in circuit path in other words this path but it also prevents us from starting it in the first place if the stop push button is pressed. Okay, so the other question is why did I use a normally open contact or a XIC here? And this has to do with how the stop push button contact is wired to the input module. Now obviously this contact needs to be closed in order to allow the motor to start in the first place. Um, so first I'll tell you why it needs to be like this and then I'll tell you how this contact needs to be wired to the input module. So here's why. One of the concepts that we have developed in industrial controls over the years is the idea of making a circuit fail safe. So in other words, designing your controls in such a way that if a control circuit or device or battery source fails that the equipment that it controls will shut down rather than keep running without a way to shut down because that's not a good situation. So what we want for our stop button control is that the wires or the push button fails for some reason or a wire becomes loose and loses connection. We don't want this logic uh, or we do want this logic to shut off the motor. We don't want it to keep running. And that's for two reasons. The primary reason is that we don't want to lose our stop control of the motor because it may need to be stopped for safety purposes and we don't want to lose the ability to stop it. And the second related reason is that we wouldn't know it failed until we tried shutting down the motor uh, if it wasn't wired in a fail-safe way. Okay, so that's why it's important for the stop button to be wired in a fail-safe way. We need the ability to shut it down uh, when the time comes. So what exactly is the correct way to wire it to the input? So how do we wire the stop push button to the input? I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but it's pretty simple really. We just want to make sure it's a normally closed contact to the PLC. So in other words, um, when the button is not pushed, we have a, a true input so that this XIC will be closed like this and allow the motor start relay to be activated. So that means that if a wire fails or the push button fails for some reason um, and the circuit is interrupted to the input module, that will drop this out and this will become false like that. Okay, so that was a nice little tangent, uh, but I did want you to be aware of the importance of fail-safe circuits like this and how they interact with your PLC logic. Uh, there's more to be said about that, but uh, there's a brief introduction for you. So moving on to the next rung, these ones are pretty simple. Basically we use this motor running input, which uh, comes from uh, slot 1, input 5, and we are either turning on the motor running light or we're turning on the motor stopped light. 
So this motor running input would be something that is triggered once um, it sees the motor running at a certain speed. So it could be some relay that detects that the motor has reached a thousand RPMs or whatever the speed needs to be. Or it could be coming from a VFD or something like that. So if motor running is on, then this light will turn on. And obviously this logic isn't running, so it's not responding to the changes in my tags here. But And if motor running is off, then the motor stopped light would be on. All right, moving on to the next rung, let's quickly discuss timers and counters. Uh, we won't go into too much detail here for the sake of time, but if you need to learn timers and counters well and get some practice programming with them, you should definitely join our PLC membership called My PLC Training Academy. We go into plenty of detail there. Okay, so rung three, we've got our motor running input again, starting a TON timer, which means it turns on when the input is true. And it's set for 30,000 which is 30,000 milliseconds or 30 seconds. So after the motor has run for 30 seconds, this done bit will uh, become true, which will make this XIC open and interrupt the motor start relay as we discussed before. So next we have a motor running um, bit driving the motor run count counter. And this is pretty simple. It's a count up counter. So anytime this pulses on, so it goes from off to on, this is going to count up one. And once it gets to 100, that's going to turn on the done bit for the counter, which will turn on a motor maintenance light. So this would be um, a situation where the motors run 100 times and you every time it's run a hundred times you want to make sure you do a maintenance check on it or something. So what's also going on with this rung here is that we're going to turn on the motor run count RES instruction which will reset this back to zero. So this is another latch in circuit that will latch in when this goes done and then when this turns off, because the reset has reset this back to zero, this will stay latched in until the maintenance reset push button is pressed. Okay. Okay, now before we wrap up this lesson, let's simulate starting the motor one time and just see how it works here in the logic. Okay, so here we are online with a Logix Emulate controller, and this little guy uh, just woke up, so he's going to join me on this final part of the lesson. And um, so I'm just going to toggle this start push button, and I have some uh, really simple simulation logic that basically says if we turn on the motor start relay, wait a couple seconds, and then turn on the motor running input to show that the motor actually started. So let's see if that works. I'll toggle on the start push button. Okay, first of all, we got to make sure our start push button is ready to go, or our stop push button. And then I'll toggle on the start push button, control T, toggle it off. Motor is running. If we go down to rung three, we can see this timer is timing. And we'll let it get all the way to 30 seconds. Okay, so um, I realized that the motor start relay and motor running bits were turning, toggling on and off super fast, even though we couldn't see it. And the reason is it was trying to read uh, from the from this input module, and since there's nothing hooked up to the input module, it was reading a zero, and we we're telling it to be a one in the simulation logic, so there was a conflict there. So to solve that, I just briefly showed it to you, but open it up here again. Go to the module properties for the input module, inhibit the module, and then um, it won't be trained to overwrite. So there's a little tip for you, bonus tip. And so when we start this, control T, to toggle it on, 
motor running turns on and then you can see the timer start counting here we're at five seconds and you can actually see this motor run count went to 35 because of that bit toggling on and off I'm just gonna set it back to zero we'll see it count up to one once this um, once we restart the motor so once this reaches 30 it should interrupt the circuit here there we go interrupted the circuit and of course the motor run count is back to zero because I set it to zero if we toggle this on one more time we'll see this go up to one there you go okay so that's it for this walkthrough video of ladder logic hopefully you learned something and are just that much closer to becoming a confident PLC programmer if you're really serious about speeding up the process towards becoming a confident PLC programmer, then definitely check out our membership. It's called My PLC Training Academy. There's a link below. And we'll give you step-by-step -step, um, courses to become confident with Alan Bradley PLC programming, troubleshooting. And really soon we're adding some training on HMI design uh, to the membership. So that's it for now. We'll see you in the next video.